Okay, welcome to yoga, gentle yoga. Let's go ahead and get started. So I'm Mickey. Feel free to come to lying on your back. I always like starting out in constructive rest pose so we can kind of settle in and set our intention. So you can come to lying on your back, allow your feet to walk as wide as your mat. You can maybe allow your knees to tent together. Maybe allow your arms to rest at your sides or you could bring your hands onto your belly. You might close down your eyes or maybe even just find a soft gaze. And just as a reminder, this is absolutely your practice. So I'm just here to guide you through and offer some ideas and suggestions. Today's theme for class is called a parigraha, and that means non-possessiveness. So as I bring up some readings from this book by Deborah Adele about the yamas and the niyamas, yoga's ethical practices, you might either set an intention for yourself in your practice, or maybe you can find something within the reading that resonates with you. So about a parigraha non-possessiveness, the book says, what we hold begins to hold us. Anything we cling to creates a maintenance problem for us. The material items that we hoard, collect, or buy because they are on sale or take because they are free, all take up space and demand our attention. Subtle attachments come in the form of our images and beliefs about ourselves and about how life should be, about how others should be. These images keep us in bondage to our own learning and growth. Clutter in our physical space blocks our ability to physically move, while clutter in our minds blocks our freedom to expand and have space for the next thing that life wants to bring us. The word attachment can be traced back to a root word that means to nail. Attachments are like nailing ourselves to our need for someone or something to continue to be the same and to always be there for us in the same way. When we nail ourselves to our needs for others, to our feelings, our roles, our agendas, our pleasures, our identities, we become more like rats in a maze than free human beings. So maybe you want to take the ideas of non-possessiveness or maybe you want to even let them go. And just notice in your body if you have a sense that there is an intention for your practice. Perhaps it's something you would like to cultivate or even something you'd like to release. And you might bring your hands onto your belly just sense the rise and fall of your breath. How can you also use the idea of non-possessiveness, non-attachment with your breath? Letting go fully so that you can invite the next new breath in. And just like letting go of the breath, there's a trust and a faith that the breath will return to you. The more you're able to let go, the more fully you can let the next thing come to you. And then let's go ahead and extend our arms and up to the sky and you can just begin to shake and wiggle out your arms and your legs 
Maybe rotate gently the wrists and the ankles. And then we'll keep the arms lifted, but you can go ahead and plant your feet back on the mat with the feet open or the feet wide, the knees facing up. And then we're gonna go ahead and create a box shape with the arms. So grasp hold of opposite elbows with the elbows facing up towards the sky. As your knees fall over to the left, you might draw the elbows over to the right. Take a nice deep breath here. And then exhale. On your next inhale, you can bring the arms and the knees back up through center and then allow the knees to fall over to the right and you can allow the elbows to stretch over to the left. Feel free to go at your own pace, following the pace of your own breath. And we'll keep switching side to side. You can keep the eyes closed or the gaze soft. And as you breathe here, just continue to notice the sensations in the body. Let's take one more nice deep breath on each side. And when you feel complete from left to right, we'll come back to center. And walking the heels in towards the sit bones. On your next inhale, you can float the arms up overhead, reaching them up past the ears. And then exhale, bring the hands down next to the hips. Maybe roll the chin in towards the chest. Inhale to lower and then exhale on your next inhale as you walk the heels in towards the sit bones. You can inhale to lift the hips for bridge. Exhale, roll the spine back down one vertebrae at a time and then we'll inhale the arms up overhead. Exhale, lower the heart, arms next to the hips. Then maybe roll the chin up towards the chest. On your next inhale, you can lower the head back down. And then exhale. On your next inhale, lift the hips into bridge. And exhale to lower the spine back down. Let's take a few more rounds like this. Inhale the arms up over head past the ears. Exhale, lower the hands back down. Maybe roll the chin up towards the chest. Inhale to release the head back down. Slowly exhale. Inhale to lift the hips into bridge. And then exhale to lower the spine back down. Go ahead and take one more round at your own pace. And when you're ready, we'll meet back in center. Let's extend the knees up. So the shins are now parallel to the ceiling. And then you can float the hands up. So you're in an upside down tabletop. Your hands are pressing against the ceiling and your shins are resting on the ceiling. 
You can begin to engage your core muscles here, drawing the belly button towards the spine and pressing the low back towards the mat. On the next inhale, we'll reach the right arm and left leg long to hover and then exhale, bring them back to center. Inhale, stretch the left arm and right leg long to hover. And exhale, bring them back to center. Go ahead and continue to alternate side to side, finding the engagement and strength in your core. If you find your mind starts to wander, you might just gently remind yourself of your intention for your practice today. And see if you can let the thoughts go. And then when you feel complete from left to right, you can go ahead and bring your hands to rest under the back of your head, interlacing your fingers. And then with your next exhale, extend the right leg long and bring the right elbow towards the left knee. Inhale back to center and then exhale, rotate the left shoulder or elbow towards the right knee, extend the left leg long. Inhale back to center. You can just take a few more rounds, alternating side to side. Whenever you feel ready and you're ready to move on to the next thing, let's extend the legs long, reach the arms up past the ears, and find a long body stretch. And then you can walk the hands over to the right, walk the feet over to the right. You might cross the left ankle over the right shin. Maybe grasp hold of the left wrist with the right hand. And just allow the breath to cascade down the side of the left body. Take a nice deep breath. And let it all go. When you're ready, we'll walk the feet over to the left and we'll walk the arms over to the left, finding a nice C shape with the body. You might deepen the stretch by crossing the right ankle over the left shin, maybe grasp hold of the right hand with the left hand. Send a nice breath cascading down the right side of the body. And then when you're ready, we'll come back to center and you can bend the knees and then gently roll onto your right side. Press yourself up into a seat. And we'll come into a cross-legged seat. And you can begin to lengthen the spine. It might help to find a pillow or a blanket to wedge underneath the sit bones to elevate the seat. As you lengthen the spine, allow the shoulders to melt away from the ears. And then on your next exhale, allow the right ear to fall towards the right shoulder. You might gently nod your head yes, and then gently shake your head no.
And then as you're shaking your head no, finding stillness, you might gently send your gaze just up towards the left corner, lifting the chin slightly. On the next exhale, turn your gaze down towards the ground on the right side, bringing the chin towards the right shoulder. And then with your next exhale, allow the chin to trace the front of the chest. You might take a moment to pause and center. And then on your next exhale, allow your left ear to fall towards your left shoulder. Take a moment to nod your head yes. And then gently shake your head no. The next time your chin comes up towards the right, you might pause there, sending your gaze up to the right corner of the room. And then on your next exhale, float your chin down towards your left shoulder, sending your gaze down to the left side of the body. And with your next exhale, you can float the chin back to center. And then go ahead and lift the gaze, coming back to neutral. Next, we'll inhale to sweep the arms up overhead, looking up. And then exhale, plant the right hand down on the side of your body as you reach the left fingertips up and over. You might gaze up at your lifted fingertips. With your next exhale, allow the left fingertips to sweep down towards the ground and then circle sweep the arm back up and over. Let's take two more rounds in this direction, sweeping the arm down and around. And then inhale the hand back up and over. And one more time with this sweeping action. And then when you're ready, we'll inhale to come back up to center Look up and then exhale, land the left palm on the ground and reach the right hand up and over to the left. You might gaze up at the fingertips. And on the next exhale, allow the hand to float down towards the ground. Inhale to circle sweep the arm back up and over. And two more times like this. After your last round, you can inhale to bring the arms back up to center. We'll interlace the fingers, press the palms up towards the sky. And then on your next exhale, go ahead and turn the torso to the left. You can release the hands down to come into a twist. Bring the right hand onto the left knee and you might plant the left palm behind you and turn the gaze behind the left shoulder. Take a nice deep breath. With your inhale, allow the spine to lengthen. And with your exhale, it might twist you a little further to the left. And with your next exhale, allow the chin to trace the front of the chest and send just the gaze past the right shoulder. On the next inhale, we'll unwind that twist coming back to center. And then you can inhale the arms back up overhead, interlacing the fingers, press the palms up towards the sky. And then we'll turn the torso to the right, releasing the hands down to bring the left hand onto the right knee anchoring the right hand behind you, you can turn your gaze past your right shoulder.
With each inhale, allow the spine to grow a little taller. And each exhale, allow the twist to maybe be a little bit deeper. With your next in exhale, go ahead and allow the chin to come towards the front of the chest. And you can allow the gaze to fall behind the, the left shoulder this time. Take one more nice deep breath here. And then with your next exhale, you can release. Let's bring the legs out wide. So we're finding a wide-legged stance with the legs. You can have the toes pointing up towards the sky here. And then with your next inhale, we'll reach the arms up overhead. Then exhale to bow forward, hinging at the hips. So you might bring your hands onto the floor, or onto blocks. And maybe you don't go very far. Just allow yourself to lead with the heart, sinking the heart gently forward. Maybe close down the eyes or soften the gaze. And just notice where you have sensations in your body. With your next inhale, you can walk the hands back through center and then we'll bend the left knee and you can place the left foot on the inner thigh. Then go ahead and turn to face your right foot and with your next exhale, you can walk your hands forward, framing the shin and allowing the heart to melt towards the thigh or the foot. Maybe it feels good to cross the left arm across to the outside edge of the right foot, or you can continue just to press your hands into the ground. With your next inhale, go ahead and walk the hands back up and you can go ahead and walk or bend your knee and walk your right foot in towards your left foot. Now we'll take the left hand and cross it over the top of the right foot, grasping onto the outside edge of the foot. And then you might kick that foot out long as you reach the right arm behind you. Maybe you send your gaze back towards your right fingertips or your right thumb. With your next exhale, you can release that side and then we'll go ahead and extend the left leg long, bring the right foot to rest on the left inner thigh and then turn to face your left leg. And leading with the heart, you can allow yourself to bow forward over that left leg. Take some nice deep breaths here, relaxing into the shape. Maybe you walk the right hand to the outside edge of the left foot. And then with your next inhale, we'll walk the hands back up to center. And you can bend the left foot and then we're gonna take the right hand and cross it over the top of the left foot. And you can start to pick up the foot and extend the leg long for a twist. Go ahead and extend the left arm behind you. Lengthening the spine, maybe sending the gaze to the left thumb. And then when you're ready, you can gently undo that by releasing the foot. Let's bring both feet to touch now. So we're in a butterfly shape and then go ahead and inhale to lengthen the spine. Exhale to fold forward, walking the hands forward, leading with the heart. 
allowing the heart to melt towards the feet, any amount that feels right for you. You can soften the gaze or close down the eyes. Allow the shoulders to relax and the hinge of the jaw to relax. Maybe allow the spine to round. And then on your next inhale, you can walk the hands back to center. We'll cross the ankles once more and just do a little bit of warming up through the wrists. So you can go ahead and interlace the fingers, start to draw a few figure eights with the wrists. And then you can reverse the direction of those figure eights. When you're ready, release the hands, give them a nice gentle shake. And then we'll stretch the palms out wide to the sides, like you're pressing the walls away. And then go ahead and bring the fingers down to make a fist. So your knuckles are pointing down towards the ground. And then on your next inhale, you can rotate the knuckles up and then exhale, lower them back down. Inhale to circle them up towards the sky and exhale to rotate them down. And then once more, we'll inhale to press the palms away. And then exhale, you can bring the hands to the heart center Allow your head to bow towards your heart. And then when you're ready, we'll make our way to tabletop. So I like to bring my hands out in front and roll over my shins, but you can make your way to tabletop however you'd like. If it's hard on the wrists, you can always come on to fists or you can also come onto your forearms. So from your tabletop position or any position that works best for you, on your next inhale, go ahead and drop the belly button down towards the ground, lift the tailbone and reach the heart forward for cow pose. On your next exhale, you can round into the spine, drawing the belly button in for cat. And take a few rounds of cat and cow, following the pace of your own breath. Maybe it feels good after a few rounds to start to draw a circle with the belly button. Feeling into all the movements of the spine. And if you're drawing a circle with the belly button, go ahead and reverse the direction. And you can always feel free to pause if you find any areas that need special attention or maybe it feels good in one spot. And when you're ready, we'll make our way to a neutral spine. You can bring the big toes to touch, open the knees up wide to the side, sink the hips back and walk the hands out in front, lowering the forehead down for child's pose. Take a nice deep breath in your child's pose. If you'd like to deepen the stretch, you can always Bring the palms to touch like prayer pose. Bend the elbows, bring the fingertips to point to the low or to, towards the back of the neck. I find that gives me a deeper stretch through my triceps and shoulders.
Take a nice deep breath in child's pose and maybe even stick out the tongue for your exhale. <sighs> like lion's breath. And then we'll come back to tabletop with the palms underneath the shoulders, but you can keep the knees a little bit wide. We're gonna come in to thread the needle. So inhale to reach the right hand up towards the sky, looking up. And then on your next exhale, you can thread the needle under, coming onto the right shoulder. Allow your temple to rest. Maybe continue to support your weight with your left hand. Or you might walk your left fingertips out in front like child's pose. Or maybe even spin that left hand around and allow it to rest at the low back. For a little more leverage, you could walk it towards your right thigh or even grasp hold of your waistband or your shirt. Take some nice deep breaths here. Relaxing into the shape. And with your next exhale, you can float the hand back down to the ground. Press the left palm underneath the left shoulder. And then inhale to open back up, reaching the right hand up towards the sky. On your next exhale, plant the right palm and then inhale the left arm up towards the sky, maybe looking up. And on the next exhale, you can weave that hand under for thread the needle coming onto the left shoulder, allowing the left temple to rest. You might notice subtle variations from left to right. And then ask yourself if you want to continue to support your weight with your right hand. Or maybe it would feel good to walk the right fingertips out in front. Or perhaps you could spin the right hand around and allow the back of the hand to rest at the low back. Take some nice deep breaths here. Just noticing the sensations in your body. Coming back to your intention for your practice. Allow yourself to feel held and supported by the earth. And if your hand is resting at your low back, you can gently allow it to slide back down. Plant the right hand underneath the right shoulder and then press into the earth. Inhale to open the left side, reaching the hand up overhead. And then exhale, we'll sweep that hand back down. Now you can take either a child's pose if you'd like, or maybe you would wanna take a downward facing dog. So we'll tuck the toes under, walk the hands a little bit up past the shoulders. And then you can one at a time lift the knees and come into a downward dog, maybe pedaling the heels, sashaying the hips a little side to side. Stretching one heel down towards the ground to find length through the back of the legs. When you're ready, we'll meet in forward fold. So you can walk your hands to your feet or your feet to your hands. Once you arrive in your forward fold, go ahead and wrap your hands around your opposite elbows and just allow yourself to dangle here. 
ragdolling from side to side. You might shake your head no, and nod your head yes. And then you can release your hands coming back to center. We'll bring our palms to our shins and inhale for halfway lift with a flat back. Exhale to forward fold. And then on the next inhale, you can bend into the knees and sweep the hands up overhead. And then exhale, draw the hands to the heart center. On the next inhale, we'll sweep the hands up overhead and exhale to swan dive forward. Inhale for halfway lift, pressing into the shins, allowing the crown of the head to reach forward. And then exhale to forward fold. Let's plant the palms and we'll walk the feet back Coming back to your downward facing dog or feel free to come into tabletop with the knees on the mat. When you're ready on the next inhale, let's come forward to a plank. And you can always lower onto your knees for a little more support. Drawing the belly towards the spine. And on the next exhale, go ahead and lower down onto the belly. We'll bring the elbows out in front, pressing the palms on the ground for Sphinx pose. You can draw the heart forward as you traction the hands back for a gentle back bend. It might feel good to inhale, roll the shoulders up towards the ears. Exhale to allow the shoulder blades to extend down the back. And then with your next exhale, go ahead and turn your gaze to the left. You can sweep the hands behind you. I like to tuck my toes under and just press my body a little bit forward so that my temple, my right temple can fall to the mat. Allow yourself here the opportunity to delight in this time of rest. Soften all effort and feel the body completely supported by the strength of the earth. Letting go of all effort and all expectations. And with your next inhale, we'll lift the heart, bring the gaze back to center right off of the edge of the front of your mat. And then you can float the arms and legs up towards the sky for locust pose. Balancing on the belly, using the strength of the core and the spine to allow you to fly. With your next exhale, you can turn your gaze over to the right this time. Allow your left temple to rest. And once more, Soften all of your effort. Feel the support of the earth rising to meet you. And then when you're ready, we're gonna spread our hands wide to the sides, bringing them into a letter T shape. Now we'll creep the left fingertips to the left as you roll onto your left side. You can allow your head to rest here. Maybe stack the legs. If you feel you want to deepen the stretch, you could bend the right knee and maybe just step the right foot behind you, maybe even the tiptoes. If that's too much, you can always bring back that leg and allow it to stack. And one more variation I like to offer is to bend the right knee. Maybe you reach down with the right hand to grasp hold of the shin to get a quad stretch here. 
Take a moment to send breath to any areas of sensation. And then with your next exhale, we'll find the second side. So you can roll back onto the belly, creep the fingertips behind you to the right, roll onto the right side, Allow the temple to rest and you can flex the feet here or maybe bend the left knee and step the left foot behind the right leg. Another option would be to grasp hold of the ankle with the left hand and allow the left knee to fall towards the right knee. Flexing the toes towards the knee to activate the muscles of the legs. Take a nice deep breath here. And on the next exhale, we'll release the foot and roll back onto the belly. You can press the palms underneath the shoulders and then roll the shoulders up towards the ears and allow them to melt down the back as you lift the heart for baby cobra. On the next exhale, you can release that and then tuck the toes under and press up either through table or plank. And we'll find one more downward facing dog or child's pose, your choice. Take a nice deep breath in either your child's pose or your downward facing dog. And then when you're ready, we'll meet up in hands and knees. And you can walk the knees forward to come back onto the seat. Let's bring the knees out in front so they're facing up towards the sky. And then you can walk the feet as wide as your mat and allow both knees to fall over to the right in like a mermaid seat. With your next exhale, go ahead and land the right hand behind you, sweep the left arm up and over, and you might even press your hips up. With the next exhale, we'll float the seat back down, and you can swivel your arms and your knees over to the left. And then once more, we'll plant the left hand behind us reach the right arm up and over and you might even lift the hips here. On the next exhale, go ahead and lower back down and we'll come back to center now. You can plant the palms underneath the shoulders, walk the heels in and when you're ready, lift the hips to come into altar pose with the gaze at the navel, up at the sky, or you might allow the gaze to fall behind you. When you're ready, you can lower back down, gently landing your seat and reaching your arms forward for boat pose. You can either stay here with your feet on the ground or you might lift one leg, maybe the second leg, Maybe you bring your hands behind your thighs and lift both legs. And then whenever you're ready, you can land your feet and gently roll onto your back. Once you arrive on your back, go ahead and walk your heels in towards your sit bones. And then we'll bring the left ankle over the right thigh for figure four. You can either stay here with your left foot or your right foot on the ground, or it might feel good 
to draw the shape into the body, maybe interlace the hands behind the back of the right thigh. If it's hard to reach, you could grab onto just your pant leg, or if you have a strap or some other article of clothing, you might be able to wrap it behind your right leg just to allow more space in the upper body and the chest, relaxing the effort from the arms and the shoulders, and sending the breath into the left hip. Take a nice deep breath here. And then when you're ready, if you'd like, you can turn this into a twist. So releasing the hands, you can land the right foot and then allow both knees to fall over to the left, the right. Maybe land your left foot on the ground or if it feels like too much, you could always stack the knees to find a spinal twist. Extending the arms in either direction, maybe sending the gaze over towards the left fingertips. Take one more nice deep breath here. And then we're going to come back to center and get ready for figure four on the other side. So bringing the right ankle to rest on the left thigh. Again, you might take a strap behind the left thigh or interlace your fingers and draw the shape into the chest. I like to use a strap for a little bit of extra support and to allow my shoulders to relax. Release the jaw. Notice where you can relax your effort. You might activate the stretch a little bit more by flexing the right toes towards the right knee. Take some deep breaths to the outer right hip. And then whenever you're ready, we'll turn this into a twist by landing the left leg and allowing both knees to float over to the left. It might feel good to keep that right knee lifted with the right foot planted maybe even reaching the left hand down to grasp the right foot. Or maybe you allow the right knee to fall to the ground. And if you'd like a gentler twist, you can always stack the legs. Feel free to extend both arms in either direction, sending the gaze over towards the right fingertips. You can take a few more nice deep breaths in your twist. And then if there are any last poses you'd like to take before your final resting pose, you can feel free to take those now. And when you're ready to find your final resting pose, Shavasana, maybe you take another variation with stretching your legs up the wall, or you could even drape a blanket over the body. Allow yourself to really cozy up. And once more, you might allow yourself to revisit your intention for your practice today. And if that 
intention is a parigraha non-possessiveness, I'll leave you with a few words from Deborah Dell's book on the yamas and the niyamas, yoga's ethical practices. How many suitcases full of expectations, tasks, plans, resentments, and unforgiven moments was I toting around with me every day? How many of us are packing over the limit every morning wearying ourselves throughout the day with this heavy baggage. Non-attachment does not mean that we don't care or that somehow we shut ourselves off to the pleasures and joy of life and each other. In fact, non-attachment frees us up to be immersed in appreciation of life and one another. We are asked to let go of clinging to the thing, not the enjoyment of the thing itself. Letting go of the ownership opens us up to full engagement with what is set before us in the present moment. Life becomes a banquet and we are free to feast. Like the breath, we are invited to breathe in deeply enjoy the fullness of the inhalation, and then to let go just as deeply and fully enjoy the release of the exhalation. The fewer attachments we carry with us, the more we are free to enjoy and engage and live every moment before us to the fullest. The more breath we let go of, the more room there is in our body or the fullness of the next inhalation. The more we generously share and give away, the more expansive and light we feel. The journey of life is towards freedom. A bird cannot hold its perch and fly. Neither can we grasp anything and be free. Practicing constant generosity and unfailing trust will keep our greed in check and keep us open to life's unfolding. What wants to come to us is great and what we hold onto is often so small. You can allow those words to just float on by like clouds in the sky. So allow yourself to melt into the ground. Feel the supportive nature of the earth and its stability. And just allow yourself to fully release into this final resting pose. might start to take a gentle scan of the body. Along the way, notice if you can soften. Allow yourself to offer gratitude to this amazing body that brought you here today. You're welcome to stay longer in your final resting pose if you'd like. Or if you're ready to re reawaken the body, you can start to invite some movements into your fingers and toes. Gently rotate the wrists and the ankles. 
And then maybe inhale, stretch the arms up past the ears, finding a long body stretch. And then when you're ready, you can roll onto one side, coming into a fetal position. Go ahead and pause there for two more rounds of breath. Allowing yourself to be cradled and held. And then you're, when you're ready, you can press yourself up into a seat. Gently invite your hands to maybe meet in a prayer pose at the heart center, allowing your thumbs to rest on your sternum. You might allow your head to humbly bow towards your heart. Thank you so much for joining me and allowing me to guide you through your practice today. The light in me sees and honors the light in you. Namaste.